Number one is skincare. So whatever that is for you, if it's literally just washing your face quick and then just putting moisturizer on, that is fine. You don't need to go through a super extensive routine or anything like that, but definitely do something. Moisturizing the skin before makeup is so important because makeup really, really dries up the skin. And when your skin is moisturized, everything's going to sit a lot nicer. It's not going to sink into any texture or fine lines as much as it would without moisturizer. I've already washed my face with my regular face wash um, and I've done a serum and my day moisturizer. So we're going to go on to the first step, which would be primers. The reason that I love primers is because they really help your skin be able to look its best underneath your makeup. So there's primers for all types of skin concerns, like there's pore filling ones, there is some more luminous ones, so say your skin is really dry and you like that kind of glowy look. One of my favorites at the moment is by Philosophy. This is a, basically, it's a skincare brand, but they do make this, what is this? <laughs> The Present. It's called The Present Invisible Skin Perfector and Oil-Free Makeup Primer. It feels like a moisturizer, but it's supposed to kind of smooth everything out and all that. So I've been really liking that one. There is a combination of primer that I really like, and I use two of them, uh, which kind of seems excessive. It's so not necessary, but I have a few con skin concerns that I like to target with my primers, so I do use two a lot of the time. I have dry skin right now, and texture, but I also have like really big pores, so I like to cover those up too. So what I do first is I go in with this Forsali Unicorn Essence. So I just shake it up, and I just put two drops on my face. You've probably seen people do this on Instagram. It smells really amazing, and it's very moisturizing, and it gets kind of tacky. If you can ever find a primer that kind of gets tacky as it dries, that's really going to help your makeup stay on. Um, it'll help the makeup stick. Oh god, I really need to pluck my eyebrows, but whatever. Then I'll go in, because I have large pores, as I said. I have really been liking this primer by Tarte. It is the, it's the Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer. So basically, you open it up. kind of looks like a little paste. I have, like, nothing left. But I just go in, and I just take a little bit. It's a really thick primer, but I warm it up into my hands. For a pore filling primer, you really just want to focus it on the areas that you need it and really push it into the skin. So if you're like me and have this issue, just place it and just push it into the skin like this. And then I kind of rub it and push at the same time. And I'll go into my smile lines a bit too. You can use whatever foundation you want. I am a very full coverage queen. I like to be really full coverage, usually most days, but especially when I need my Base to look like super super flawless so my absolute favorite foundation is the Estee Lauder double wear this is my absolute favorite holy grail I know it's gonna work every single time and I just stick with it I like to use a beauty sponge it is by the brand Morphe I got it at Ulta I do love sponges I find I like really pressing the product into my skin always shake up your foundations the key to not get making it cakey is gonna be little bits at a time because you can always add more but it's really hard to take away. I'm going to use my finger and I'm just going to apply some dots on my face and look real good for a second here. I like to take that flat side and I start from the middle and I go outward just so it doesn't get super cakey in the middle because we can always blend it down the neck if we end up having excess on the sides. So just start in the middle and I just, I don't press too hard, really. I just lightly press to um, get everything blended, but then always make sure I go underneath my jaw. You don't want to see that line there, people. If I go the other side. Blend up the nose. Again, start in the middle of the forehead. Go outward. All over. Gonna work a bit quicker because that kind of dried as I was applying it so that's another thing too just be careful if your foundations are drying quickly you may just need to work in sections and I'm not taking this underneath my eyes either I want to make sure that I don't go underneath my eyes because I'm going to be using concealer and I don't want it to be too cakey so I just do a little bit on the neck 
the next step is going to be concealer. So whatever concealer you like, I like a pretty full coverage one, so I have been using the Tarte Shape Tape. Now, if you've never heard of this before, it is super, super full coverage, um, and I don't find the creases too bad underneath my eyes, but I don't, I try not to use too much of it, so <laughs> keyword being dry, because you can get a little bit carried away, but I try my best. I like to conceal, but also brighten up the face a little bit, so I will add the color light, which is kind of like the same color as my foundation, and I'll just go a little bit underneath my eyes. Just a little bit there like this, just to cover up the actual dark circles. And I like to take my MAC Fix Plus and I just spray onto my Beauty Blender just to kind of wet it up a little bit and help the blending process. But what I do is I look up the entire time that I'm blending this out and I use very, very light motions to do it. Now I prefer to use a sponge for this as well. Any excess I have, I just go over top of my eyelids. And the next thing I do with my concealer is I use a lighter color. So this one is in Fair Beige. I think it's like the second lightest one. What I do is I focus this on the center of my face. I go underneath my eyes. Like that. I don't use a lot because I've already concealed the darkness. I do a little bit in the middle of my forehead and on my chin. I want to add balance and brightness to my face, so that's just why I do this. And I want it to look, not that it's going to be natural, but I don't want just, just my under eyes to be really light. I want there to be some balance on the rest of the face as well. And then again, looking up underneath the eyes. And I'm not tapping very hard at all right now. And I blend and I kind of bring it upward as well to kind of lift that under eye area. The next step is going to be the powders. So now I personally cannot go without setting my makeup like with a powder. So I need to set my under eyes and I need to set my face. That's just the way that my skin is and what I prefer. And that really helps everything stay on forever. So I would really suggest it. My favorite under eye setting powder is the RCMA No Color Powder. I just put it in this container, this like NYX container, because the container itself is super annoying. I actually use my sponge to apply my powders as well. This is a trick that I like to do and I have found it has worked so well for me in keeping my makeup on forever. So what I do first is I do my under eyes right away. So I just quickly go over it and then I just dip directly into my powder that I get some powder on and I look up and I just set underneath and I just lightly press that in. Now this is kind of like a baking technique as well. Baking is when you just put like a bunch of powder on, let it set and then brush it away but I actually don't brush it away. I just push it into the skin. So I normally do that to the other places I put concealer. So I do the same technique on my chin and on the center of my forehead. And then I also like to do this on my nose too because my nose has pretty large pores and I really find this powder does a good job of just pushing right into it. So I just literally push it in like that. So now I have kind of like the center of my face done. And then what I will do is I will take this Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder. And it actually often comes with one of these little powder puffs. And I actually use this. So you can use your um, sponge again if you want, but I don't know. I've been using this lately with powder and like pushing into the skin and I just feel like it it just looks so flawless and I just, I don't know, I've really been liking it. So that's kind of a technique I've been using. So I will do that for the rest of my face with this powder. And this isn't adding any additional coverage. So it's not going to get all cakey. It's just adding the security of like having your makeup stay on all day. 
So I literally just do this, put this big up, and it feels kind of good, so I like to use it. And then again, on the forehead as well. So this is one of the reasons I don't do my eyebrows before I do my foundation, because I just get shit everywhere. So we've got our foundation, concealer, and powder on. So this is kind of our main base of the face. So now we have a really blank canvas that's very even in skin tone, very even in texture, and now we can add on other things to bring our skin back to life. Before we do that, what I really like to do to ensure my makeup stays on long, as well as doesn't look cakey or dry or powdery, is I will spray MAC Fix Plus. It's like a prep and setting spray. I use it throughout the application of my makeup, but I just spritz on my face, let it dry, let all those powders kind of melt together before I go in with my bronzer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I take my sponge and I just lightly press that setting spray into the skin and make sure everything is not powdery. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of bronzer to our skin. So we're gonna just place the bronzer in strategic spots on our face. So I will show you where I like to do that. Bronzer Mini Stay is the Hoola Light by Benefit. I always start kind of from the outer perimeter of the face and then bring inward because wherever you place the product first, that's where it's gonna have the most pigment. So you don't really want to do that in the center of your face and then you're gonna have a blob of like bronzer right in the center of your face. And we kind of want to keep the bronzer to the perimeters. So the higher points of the face, so cheekbones. So I'm just gonna start at the back and I'm going to bring that forward. So I kind of just bring it right to kind of where my eye starts. So start from the back and bring forward. And I keep it kind of high up more so it's on the cheekbone because that's a higher point of where you'd get sunkissed. And then I take a little bit onto the side of my forehead and then I just go down like this. I like to go a little bit on my neck as well just to add a little bit of color. Next order of business is going to be blush. So blush I think is a kind of a scary thing for a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to look like a clown or they're not really sure how to apply it. And a lot of the issue is that too much is applied and it doesn't look natural and it's intimidating. So what I like to do is I like to smile and I go right in the center of the apple of the cheek and then bring the blush there. I'm going to be applying this Burt's Bees blush. Didn't know they had blushes, but they're good. So I like to just dip in like one, two, three, tap off the excess, and then I just kind of like brush it in that area like so. So it's kind of like in front and on top of the bronzer. Right in the center of the apple of the cheek and brush it back a little bit. I don't ever want to get closer than within the finger or so from my nose. So now the next thing I like to do after the step of blush and bronzer is I spray again on my face with Fix Plus. And another reason I like to do this as well is because I find that it helps my highlight to stand out, which is my favorite part of makeup. So I'm gonna be using this Natasha Denona Glow Powder. And I'm going to go in right above where I put that blush. Just right on the top of the apple of the cheek. And I just, just for, see, ooh, 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 that's pretty. A little bit on the tip of my nose and a little bit on the bridge, underneath the brow, and a little bit above it. So that's why I also wait to do my eyebrows because I like to add some hat. The last step for the flawless face is going to be setting spray. So setting spray really helps to obviously set your makeup, increases the longevity of it, and helps all the powders melt together as well. The setting spray I like to use at the very end is the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is my favorite. Um, I've just always found it works for me and I really like it. So I'm going to spritz a lot. And 
myself with a random look. This is our flawless face. This is These are the steps that I take and these are the techniques that I use and they really work for me. So hopefully they work for you too. I am gonna go and finish the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. All right guys, so this is the completed look. Just wanted to show you the completed look so you can see how it all comes together. Hopefully it was really informative for you guys. Hopefully there's at least a few things that you took away from it and maybe a few things that you wanna give a try and a few products that you wanna try as well. So uh, please give this video a thumbs up so I know to do more videos like this. Also subscribe if you haven't, cause that would be wicked. All right, I will see you guys in my next one. Peace.